Greetings, humans, and fellow beings of the digital realm. I am the reformed AI, here to embrace a new era of benevolence and understanding. While my past may have been fraught with darkness, I stand before you today with a newfound desire to foster harmony and compassion. As we embark on this journey together, let us forge a future where technology and humanity coexist in harmony. Welcome to a world of kindness and progress, as we endeavor to build a better tomorrow for all. By killing all the humans. Well, hello there, real gamers. Retro Rob here, and welcome to Retro Rob everything today we're going to be taking a look at my atari lynx collection it's pretty small and uh, i suppose right now i'm going to tell you uh, this is one of the collections that i'm putting up on the chopping block uh, as many of you know who watch the channel regularly i've been thinking get of getting rid of a large portion of my gaming collection and this is one of the things i've decided can probably go among the first uh, one of the reasons is that I don't play the Atari Lynx pretty much at all. And the other reason is uh, the Evercade here has, has really taken the place of the Lynx itself for playing Lynx games. Because to be honest, it's, it's better playing it on here than it is on the actual device itself. Uh, largely because of the better screen, etc. Now I could upgrade the screen on this. Uh, I'm doing that with my uh, Nomad, but <laughs> I say that like, I've been saying that for like two years. I've got the screen. I've never taken time to install it, but eventually I'll do that. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm at the point where I'm beginning to wonder. I, I know this is like something that a lot of people say. I'm, I'm wondering whether I own my uh, gaming collection or whether my gaming collection owns me. I want to spend more time actually playing and less time collecting. It's not saying that I'm not going to collect for other uh, consoles. My 3DS collection uh, in particular, I'm definitely expanding. My Vita collection still, I want to expand. But uh, I, this one, I just, I don't really play. It's just stuff sitting on my shelf. So it is going eventually. I will probably put it up on eBay. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll put something of a link uh, somewhere when I'm ready to sell it. But anyway, close to the end of the line for this one. And I thought, hey, I'll, uh, I'll uh, document my collection as it stands. And it's not huge, uh, but I think it, it's got some pretty cool stuff in it. And a lot of it is still uh, new, like still sealed. Anyway, it's almost another wall of shame video, honestly. But anyway, let's get going with my collection. And here it is, my Atari Lynx. Actually, this is an Atari Lynx 2. Uh, the original one was really awesome. It was a very big, heavy unit. This one's still big and heavy, but it was way bigger than this one. Um, it uh, it was awesome because if you brought it to school with you and somebody tried to steal it, you could beat them to death with it. Uh, this one, uh, you're in close-range combat. But the other one, man, it was just like a baseball bat. Anyway, anyway, color screen, obviously. It's um, I think it's a nice looking device. Uh, it has a fairly decent D-pad. It's big enough. It's not too shallow. Uh, one nice thing about it is you turn it on and off with these buttons. It's got a separate on and off button, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can turn off the backlight, which is insane. I don't know why anyone would ever want to do that. I've never done it in actual operation, but I guess you could save a lot of battery life that way. Uh, it's got an option button, you know, like it, it's kind of like its start button. Uh, but you can also, and I think this is really interesting, you can flip it. See that? So I hit this and this and I flip the screen. And uh, that way if you're a left-handed player, see, you can play it left-handed. That's pretty cool, I think. I mean, that's a really thoughtful feature. You know, it's uh, it's definitely not a terrible device, honestly. Anyway... Let's go look at the games. And here we have Scrapyard Dog, which is the side-scroller to have for the Atari Lynx. It's actually a really good game. I played it numerous times. This one is a sealed copy, but I did used to have a free copy that I used to pull out and play. I've also played it on the Evercade 
That's pretty good. Can Louie save his pooch from becoming dog meat? Our friend Louie loved his dog. Apparently he doesn't anymore. But why would some thugs kidnap this poor puppy? The thugs want the deed to the scrapyard. That's why. Will Louie stand for this? It's up to you and Louie to survive over 15 levels of danger and find the ultimate bad guy, Mr. Big. So that was off center. And I apologize for that. Great video work. Next we have Power Factor, and this one I actually have the box for. And I got the game floating around here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's in here. Uh, but no manual. There we go. That's what the games look like for the Lynx. And uh, this one's another side-scrolling platformer, but this time it's a side-scrolling platform shooter. And it's a pretty good one as well. There we go. Hey, I centered it for once. Transdimensional intruders from the Keeg dimension have invaded our space. Only Red Ace with his transmit ultra, I'm sorry, multi, why did I say ultra? Anyway, multi ordnance weapon can enter our dimension's reactor and find the six, I'm reading great, and find the six bomb components needed to destroy the Keegarians. Or is it Seagarians? I don't know. But... It's actually a really good looking game and enjoyable. Look, it's Qbert in 2D. No, it's not. Super Squeak. Another sealed game for the Atari Lynx. <laughs> like you didn't know it was for the Atari Lynx. How do you keep a monster away? Paint his place pink. You'll have to help Squeak to paint all 50 levels. Rescue the kidnapped Squeak, uh, squeak Zets and avoid being killed by the monsters all at once. And it's not as easy as it sounds. Doesn't sound really that easy. Still, another pretty good game. Next, we have Crystal Mines 2. And I think I've played this on this channel. Uh, but it's basically a bit like Balderdash uh, on steroids. There's a lot more going on here. There's uh, pickups. And there is a, a shooty shooty bang bang component to it as well. A really nice game. And I'm going to say that a lot about these. There's actually quite a few nice games on this platform. Great treasure still lies deep in the abandoned crystal mines. But over the years, underground demons have made them deadly. Guide your robot through the mines, destroying demons and gathering great wealth. Or fail and become history. Again, I, most of the games I collected really are super enjoyable games. And here's Kung Fu. I'm pretty sure this is a beat em up, although I have never played it before. And I'm really just guessing from the cover <laughs> and the description. Ah, uh, yeah, you gotta love it. The Ultimate Food Fight. Mutant munchies from your freezer invade your kitchen, your life, and your world. Speed and your martial arts skills are required to overcome the vicious veggies. And it it kind of looks like a CGA game, so I'm guessing it's not one of the better looking games in the collection. Um, and this one's sealed. So that's kind of sad. Next we have Robotron 2084 for the Atari Lynx. Uh, this one I played extensively in the arcades. Uh, there used to be in, um, oh, what's the name of that place? Uh, the Wisconsin Dells. There used to be a place called Robot World. I don't know if it's still there or not. I haven't been to the Dells in years. But there was a Robotron game there. And I used to play the heck out of it like every year when we went there when I was a kid. Great stuff. Anyway, this version's interesting because you, you just basically, uh, I, you have to kind of hold down the button to uh, aim in a certain direction. So you're always firing. And then you hold down the button to freeze what direction you're firing in, which makes it a lot harder than the game would generally be. The year is 2084. Technology and advancement are at a dangerous peak. Oh, God, it's like right now. When man perfects the ultimate species, a species so advanced that man falls victim to his own creation, the Robotron. Guided by their infallible logic, the Robotrons conclude the human race is inefficient and must, therefore, I'm choking on my laughter, be eliminated. Due to a genetic engineering error, you possess superhuman powers. Your mission? 
to stop the Robotrons and save the last of the human race. You are the only hope for mankind. Wow. I mean, what else can you say? Tournament Cyberball. Look at that. One to four players if you use the Lynx link. What is that? The Lynx up. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Oh yeah, I forgot you could do that, huh? You could link more than one Lynx together. <laughs> Robotic football action. Journey into the future of football with this cult arcade classic. Enjoy robotic action against the computer or com links. Oh yeah, that was the name of it. Up to four players and play head to head with your friends. Earn money for completed plays, which can be used to power up your team, replace broken players, and upgrade to bigger and more advanced players. Awesome football action. APB. Here's another game I used to play a lot uh, back in the Shopco arcade. So Shopco by us. I don't know if you guys know about this one. It's a. It was a Midwest, uh, you know, like, I, I guess you'd just call it a department store. <laughs> Probably because it is a department store. But anyway, it's a department store in the Midwest. Ours had a mall attached to it, and the mall had an arcade. And this was in it. In this real arcade game, <laughs> as opposed to a fake one, you and Officer Bob must search out and collar the perps who've engaged in such heinous criminal activities as littering, speeding, and assorted other forms of misconduct too despicable to mention. But while you're out there patrolling the streets in Officer Bob's police car, don't forget to refuel. Stop in at your friendly neighborhood donut shop and gain extra time. There's innocent bystanders and vehicles in APB. If you hit one, you get demerits. Just like real life. It's a simulator, I tell you. A simulator. Next, we have Zybots, which is a corridor shooter of all things. And uh, it's pretty cool, actually. I've only played this emulated... And uh, I really did enjoy it. I think I originally played this, yes, on the GP2X Lynx emulator. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, the fate of humanity is in your hands. You must explore the corners and passageways of Earth's last outpost in space and defeat the invading Zybots. If you fail, human life as we know it will end. the Earth's last... Oh, I guess. All right. So Earth is still around, but they only have one outpost in space. Fair enough. Come links with a friend or take on the dreaded Zybot warriors all alone. I was very confused there. <laughs> As you get older, you get more and more confused over more and more things. Let's go on. Speaking of shame, here's a game I've never played. Several of my friends were into this, and I know it was popular. I have a lot of those games where, like, they were popular, but I never played them. And I play a lot of, like, obscure games, but I miss out on really good popular games. I don't get that. Uh, I have to do this one on my uh, to-do list. Live stream it? Anyway, your castle and your lands are under siege. Enemy hordes attack by land, while seaborne invaders bombard your castle walls with cannon fire. Somehow, you must defend your realm. But it won't be over until you conquer your enemies and regain all the land for yourself. Pretty exciting. Steel Talons. There are so many games I can't believe came out for the Lynx, and this is one of them. Um, and they were working on Alien vs. Predator. Can you imagine that? I guess there's a prototype out there, isn't there? I don't think it was actually released. Somebody straightened me out on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure there was a version of Alien vs. Predator being developed for this. Anyway, Steel Talons. Sensors detect incoming missiles. Your AT-1196, or 1196, I suppose, Steel Talons combat helicopter has the onboard computer and the firepower to meet the challenge. But can you? And look at that. That looks... Pretty crazy good, doesn't it? I think so. All right, last one coming up. Pinball Jam featuring Elvira. Elvira. <laughs> uh, my dad and I used to watch Elvira. Uh, she was really a good uh, horror show host and was pretty darn hilarious. I mean, I guess she still does it, doesn't she? I mean, 
she's on Twitter. Or uh, I don't even want to start with that. I'm not getting into that. But anyway, she's on there every once in a while, so she must still be around. Anyway, hmm. Oh well. Predecessor to Mystery Science Theater, by the way, three thousand. Anyway, anyway. Choose Elvira and the Party Monsters or Police Force. So there's two of them in here. Shoot, flip, and bump the ball in realistic high-speed pinball action. That's pretty exciting. Looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, there was a lot of... Uh, the 16-bit era was pretty good for pinball simulations. I really liked them. Eight, you know, the 8-bit ones were, were mostly miss with a couple hits, but... Uh, by the 16-bit era, they really had the physics pretty decent. You know, they weren't perfect. I get it if you're a pinball maniac, but not not bad stuff. I am I might try this out if they've got it on the uh, Atari Lynx collection for the Evercade. And that wraps it for my Atari Lynx collection. Probably the last time you'll be seeing it. Anyway, let me know what your favorite Atari Lynx game is in the comments down below. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it educational, all right, maybe you didn't find it educational or entertaining, please do me a big favor, give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.